Hello, welcome to Management Science Studio. I am Vahid Latfi, Emeritus Professor of Management Science. In this video, I am going to demonstrate a two-person zero-sum game and also show you the linear programming formulation for problems that do not have what is called the pure strategy. So let's take a look at uh, a two-person game uh, with a pure strategy or a saddle point. In this case, we have two players, player A and player B. The strategies for player A are A1, A2, and A3. The strategies for player B are B1, B2, and B3. The payoff table is normally written with respect to the player A strategies or benefits. For instance, if player A selects strategy A1 and player B selects strategy B1, player A gains 10 units or $10 or whatever that unit may be. Similarly, if player A selects strategy A1 and player B selects strategy B2, player A gains 5 units. Whereas if player A selects strategy A1 and player B selects strategy B3, uh, the payoff is minus 2 units for player A or plus 2 units for player B. We would want to determine if there is a stable or uh, equilibrium solution to this game. In order to solve the two-person zero-sum game, first thing we do is we calculate the row minimums. In this case, the minimum for strategy A1 or the first row is minus 2. The minimum for strategy A2 is plus 6. The minimum for strategy A3 is minus 4 and we will identify the maximum or the largest of the row minimums. In this case it will be 6 associated with strategy A2. For player B we identify the column maximums. In this case the column maximum for B1 is 10, for B2 is 6, for B3 is 8, then we identify the minimum of the column maximum or the smallest column maximum. In this case, it is 6 associated with B2. Because the 6 is associated with B2, the value of the minimum of the column maxes and the value of the maximum of the column mins correspond to the same value or the same unit, this game has said to have a pure strategy or a uh, be in equilibrium and a saddle point is associated with strategy A2 for player A and strategy B2 for player B. In this case neither player can change their strategy to gain any uh, larger value. For instance if player A decides to go with strategy A1, there's no guarantee that player B will select B1. Player B may select B3. In this case, A loses 2 units and B gains three un 2 units. So, again, this game is called a game that has a saddle point or a pure strategy and uh, with a payoff of 6 units for player 1. Now let's take a look at a game that does not have a pure strategy. In this case I have modified the payoff associated with strategy A2 and B1 to minus 5 and now we're going to do the same thing and find out whether this game has a pure strategy. Again, we determine the row minimums, in this case minus 2 for row 1, 
minus 5 for row 2, minus 4 for row 3, and find the largest value, which is minus 2 associated with strategy A1 for player um, A. Similarly, we are going to determine the column maximums, 10 associated with B1, 6 associated with B2, 8 associated with B3, and the minimum is 6. We can see that in this case, the minimum, the, uh, the lowest, the smallest of the column minimums, which is 6 associated with B2, does not correspond to the same strategy or the same value of 6 for the maximum of the row minimums, in this case minus 2. So this game does not have a pure strategy or a saddle point. This game can be solved using what is called mixed strategies, in which case players play their strategies according to a probability distribution. We are now going to switch to Microsoft Excel to look at the game with a mixed strategy and see how we can go about solving that problem. Okay, we can see that I have a copy of the game uh, in a Microsoft Excel worksheet. We have the same two players, player A and player B, with three strategies for player A, A1, A2, A3, for player B, strategies B1, B2, B3, and the same payoff table. We have to define three probabilities for the three strategies associated with player A, player A. So those will be PA1, which is the probability that player A selects strategy A1, PA2, probability that player A selects strategy A2, PA3, the probability that player A selects strategy A3. Now we have to calculate the expected gains for player B strategies. And these are 10 times PA1 minus 5 times PA2 plus 2 times PA3 and that's expected gain of strategy B1. Similarly, for the expected gain for B2 will be 5 times PA1 plus 6 times PA2 minus 3 times PA3 and the expected gain for B3 will be minus 2 times PA1 plus 8 times PA2 minus 4 times PA3. The next step is we wish to find a player A strategy that will maximize the minimum expected gain of the three B strategies. Let Y be the maximum of the minimum gains of B1, B2 and B3. We can now form the following linear program. We want to maximize y subject to four constraints 10 pa1 minus 5 pa2 plus 2 pa3 greater than or equal to y 5 pa1 plus 6 pa2 minus 3 pa3 greater than or equal to y minus 2 pa1 plus 8 PA2 minus 4 PA3 greater than or equal to Y. And of course, since PA1, PA2, PA3 are probabilities, they should add up to 1. And we have our usual non-negativity constraints. Notice that these three constraints, when they are greater than or equal to Y, that means Y will be the minimum or the smallest value that will satisfy the three constraints. Therefore, that is the minimum and we want to maximize it. So next, take a look at the linear program and we will solve it using solver. Here is our linear programming problem once again. 
maximize y subject to r1 10 pa1 minus 5 pa2 plus 2 pa3 greater than or equal to y and the other two constraints r2 r3 r2 and r3 as well as the summation of pa1 pa2 pa3 equal to 1 and the non-negativity constraints this linear program is not in the standard form because on the right hand side we have variables we have to take him to the left hand side and make it a appear in a standard form for that reason we are going to take the y's to the left hand side and rewrite it in this format now we are ready to form the constraint coefficients and prepare this problem to be solved with solver so we will have our decision variables here pa1 pa2 pa3 and y and th this these cells will be the values of the decision variables if you're not familiar with how to solve a linear programming problem using solver please visit management science studio and look at the video that i have uh, prepared for solving linear programs with solver now we will enter our constraint coefficient, objective function coefficients are 0, 0, 0 and y, 1. And then we have our constraint coefficients r1, r2, r3, r4 as 10 minus 5 plus 2 minus 1. And then r2 is 5, 6 minus 3 minus 1. r3 is minus 2, 8 minus 4 and minus 1. And the last one is 1, 1, 1. Eight and the right hand sides are 0, 0, 0 and 1 and this is the use column which is the sum products of it's the sum products of the decision variable values multiplied to the constraint coefficients same thing for constraint number 2 same thing for constraint number 3 and of course the objective function value which is the sum product of the decision variable values multiply to the objective function coefficients and we have our right hand sides we are now ready to solve this linear programming problem using solver so we click on data and we take solver and we have to enter the objective value or objective function value the objective function value is here and the decision variable values are right here now we have to add our constraints so we'll go ahead and take the first three constraints because they have the same type of relationships which is greater than or equal to and the right hand side the right hand side values which are zero we add that those three constraints and we add one more constraint which is the fourth one and that's the used value this one is equality and the right hand side is here and we say okay so we have our four constraints and we want to maximize we leave the non-negativity constraints alone and of course we want to use the simplex method and we are ready to solve and we notice that solver found the solution and we want to keep the solution so we select OK but I also will ask for sensitivity report because the values of the dual variables will be the probability values of the strategies for the player B so we click OK and notice we have a solution the objective function value is 2.8 the values for PA1 is 0.52 PA2 is 0.48 and PA 3 is 0. What this means is that player 1 or player A will play strategy A1 52% of the time, strategy A2 48% of the time and never play strategy 3 and his expected value or gain will be 2.8. Now we wish to know what player B is expected to do. We go to the sensitivity report and here is the sensitivity report and we look at the shadow prices for constraints R1, R2 and R3. 
and let me expand this and here are the shadow prices for constraints 1, 2 and 3 and they're minus 0 0.4, 0 and 0 0.6 these shadow prices or dual values associated with the first three constraints are actually the probabilities in their absolute value the probabilities for player B's three strategies. In other words, player B should play strategy B1 40% of the time, never strategy B2 and strategy B3 60% of the time and the expected payoff, in this case loss for player B, will be 2.8. And that is how we solve the linear programming problem model of the 2% zero sum game.